695, welcome. I am not a Phoenix Suns fan. I used to be in the early 90s, but not now. Not ever. Is U.S. club soccer taking over ASA? What are we doing? This what are we doing? Getting out of control is what we're doing. Utah's zero tolerance policy, and we have a video of that sideline, of a sideline being removed for the first time. Another soccer coach pedophile being prosecuted. We have another segment of all ball with the best moments of Sunday league. And we have a hater all the way from Maryland. And we have a picture of him. And welcome to the show, Jack Cameron. What's up, brother? What's up? Uh, uh, you're, how, how are your sons doing? The purple people eaters. Hey, I'm voting. I'm going for the Warriors. So Warriors. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, best record in the NBA, and now they are very average. Comment. Let us know. Are you a Suns fan? And uh, what was that? My bad. I thought C was for comment, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, comment. Let us know, and uh, we'll get to that. But we will cover everything about what's going on with Arizona and the great divide that's being created. But we had a message from a coach yesterday. Uh, and he says in Maryland right now, and, uh, and this guy is talking crap about your podcast and your soccer beliefs. He sent me a picture of this guy. Check them out. Do you know who this guy is? I want to know who he is. Um, so, uh, so apparently he was trashing my podcast to the Utah RSL Academy and, um, yeah. So comment, if you know this guy, I want to send him a shirt for marketing our podcasts and, uh, yeah, he was talking trash. You already forget your first thing to do, Jack. Oh. Yeah. He, he was trashing my podcast to the Utah RSL Academy. Dude, you're just ruining it. It's not working. Well, you remember you How have to click on the, the board. There you go. Uh, so if you know him, let us know. Speaking of Utah, Utah Youth Soccer Association adopts a zero-tolerance policy towards referee abuse. The abuse has led to massive shortage of people willing to referee. To fight back, the Utah Soccer Association issued a zero-tolerance policy against parents and coaches who berate officials. It means that anytime people yell or argue with the referee, their team won't be able to have the spectators on the sideline for the rest of the season. So here's a video of the referee trying to clear out the sidelines. Forgive us for this small film. I think they're both pushing really hard. So there's confusion with these little girls team in Utah. And um, the referee's about to get very angry because people are arguing with him. Get a grip! You two! Actually, you know what? All of you go. Get out of here. All of you go. Exit that way. Uh, so how do you think that went? Did they all leave? Did they have to call the police? What is the next step? If that's what's going to happen, so th that according to the Utah rules, they are banned for the whole season. That's how I understand it. So the, they cannot have spectators on their sideline for the rest of the year. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be all over. And they can't be on sideline for the rest of the year. So... Isn't the year just over? But uh, I wonder if they'll follow through. I'm curious to do that. If you have videos or uh, any any uh, information on that, please let us know so we can see how they're doing with that, if it'll actually work or not. If you want to deal with the referees, it's very simple. You have to allow the, the, the game to deal with officials like this video. <laughs> Off with his head. So uh, that's how you, that's how you deal with it. And just let the game happen that way. So you got you got to admit there is a problem with the the sideline abuse. This needs to be handled by the coaching, the coaches of each individual team, and there must be an understanding and a strong conviction conviction that if you want true development for youth soccer players in America and protect the kids' ability to develop. Uh, to have, uh, con you must have control of the sidelines. Problem is that some of the coaches are too busy with other things like child enticement. It's supposed to be, how dare you? You can do it. I, Dad, you skipped something. I did? Yeah. No way. But. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So all you have to do is tell me. So there was a referee bruise. Uh, the, yeah, there, it was too late. We had to skip that. I'm down to child enticement. Okay. But Yuri missed it. I'm still waiting for how dare you. How dare you? There you go. F- former Nebraska youth soccer coach pleads no contest, uh, content, contest to child enticement charges. According to prosecutor, the 47-year-old sent inappropriate Snapchat messages to a pair of juveniles that he was coaching between March and April of 2021. The victims were 14 and 15 at the time. And uh, play the video. New at noon, a former youth soccer coach pleads no contest to one count of attempted child enticement. 47-year-old Kyle Merrick appeared in Sarpy County Court this morning. A second child enticement charge was dismissed. Merrick's sentencing is scheduled for July 12th. He faces up to 50 years in prison. He'll have to register as a sex offender for 25 years. Merrick was soccer coach for Gretna Elite Academy and assistant soccer coach for Papillon La Vista Community Schools. What are we doing? This what are we doing? We continue to hire pedophiles all over the place. Pay attention. Pay attention to the little signs of it, and I'll help you understand what to watch for. If the coach touches touches a player in any way, just on the shoulder, Possible pedophile. It's called grooming. Can't do it. Sorry, coaches. Don't even do it. Never be alone. Any of that stuff. No one-on-one conversation. You can't do any of that stuff because you're just setting yourself up for failure and people are going to should assume that you are. So don't even talk to them. I don't know. It's a problem. Now let's move on to the Arizona divide and conquer. What's going on? Divide and conquer techniques are being used. It's what? Freaking Megan. Megan's all about divide and conquer. Get out of here. Where is she? Ah! Yeah, Megan is a problem. She likes divide and conquer. That's how Megan gets gets to be all over the news. She's you just Google a Rapino. She's up everywhere. She's always causing problems like Subway, which closed twelve hundred stores last year, and a lot of Subway owners are saying it's her fault. Uh, you know, they're first uh, they're having what's his face who was a pedophile. Killed Subway, and then now they're bringing Rapino, who likes to divide and conquer, and a lot of people aren't going to Subway because of the purple hair warrior. In soccer in Arizona, we are currently in a full launch mode with U.S. soccer being used as the stake that divides an already divided Arizona. We are witnessing RSL leading the charge by gaining and maintaining power by breaking up ASA into pieces. So what is going to happen? The Soccer Alliance announces six founding member clubs in Arizona, the SAAZ, another acronym for all you soccer people out there. We get a, there's just so many. Let's just have another one. It's the SAAZ, which will elevate youth standards in the state by ensuring the more professional experiences for families, players, and coaches. No, they won't. It'll be the same. Nothing's going to change. Ch- making a new acronym, splitting things up, creating these new leagues. It's not going to fix anything. Same people running the show. The six founding clubs are Arizona Arsenal SC, Arizona SC, uh, FC Tucson Youth, Phoenix Premier FC, Phoenix Rising FC, RSL Arizona. Leaderships from these clubs will form the technical committee, which will oversee all technical aspects of the game. This aligns with the U.S. club soccer guiding principles that soccer people should make soccer decisions. Local decisions should be made locally, and the sport deserves professional management. Okay, so I'm thinking, yeah, I'm not on to that overlay yet, Jack. Um, So those are the six, and then we added two more that just came on. Now you can add the overlay. The Soccer Alliance of Arizona, SAAZ, has announced a Phoenix Rush. And PSG will join leagues expanding to eight member uh, members overall. Now, don't worry. In June, they're going to announce some more, and they're hopefully going to take them all. Now, between RSL, uh, Rising, uh, and Arsenal, that's like more than half of ASA, I'm assuming. And uh, they're, you know, waiting. And uh, Del Sol, I don't know what they're doing. They're a big group. Uh, I don't think they really care. They're, it doesn't matter which side Del, Del Sol's on. Based on this divide and conquer, it only affects the smaller clubs. So the smaller clubs, regardless of where you jump, you will be affected. It'd be better if the smaller clubs stayed together and controlled their their own league. I, I would say all the smaller clubs, stay in ASA. Let all the bigger clubs go to um, the, uh, the U.S. club and uh, go that way. 
that would be the smartest thing to do. But all the smaller clubs are scared, and what happens when you're scared? You make poor decisions like, oh, we're not going to want to play, blah, 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 and then you're going to go over there, and what's going to happen? RSL, Arsenal, Rising are going to gobble you up, and you're going to be barely functioning. That's what's going to happen. It's divide and conquer, and it's always going to affect the smaller clubs. Sorry, smaller clubs, you're in big trouble. Comment, let us know, do you think what's better, ASA or U.S. Soccer Club? U.S. Club. Now, back in the day, I was part of ASA. And it, usually, you're part of both, but now it's only one player pass. Pick one, decide for one, and that's how it's going to be. So how will this fix our continuing problem in soccer development? Remember, both ASA and the new soccer alliance will always produce this type of players. Roll the film. Come on, pull it. Get her, get her, get her. Whoa, whoa, that referee's touching those girls. Possible pedophile. Um, yeah, it, that's the soccer you typically see on the weekend. Not, not everyone's like that, but majority, you see that kind of violent soccer. You saw, saw those teams, I mean, they're all patched up, part of some acronym, National League or whatever. That's the soccer. It's disgusting. It's not fun to watch, and it's a train wreck. That's what you see constantly. And you listen to the sideline. They're, they're promoting it. All they care about is the win. That's all they see. That's all they care about. And that's a problem we have in Arizona. Uh, regardless of what team, what league you're with, ASA's league or U.S. Club's league or whatever it might be, the facts are simple. It's always similar to that because it's all about rah, rah, rah. It's all about winning. It's not about develop, development of any kind. We don't focus on the individual, and that's why we have a train wreck, and it's disgusting to watch. So um, to solve this problem, we need more of this. Play street soccer. <laughs> They love the ball. There's the best play. Whoa. He even tried to kick him. Like, full arm swing. He still couldn't kick him. And the, I, and I get what you're saying. Oh, that, that that's just, that's blasphemy what you're talking about. That's at the beautiful game. That is the beautiful game. That's the culture of the game. That's the love of the game. They're drawing crowds in streets. We don't have that. They, they have a love for the game because they love the ball. They love being able to do things with the ball. We don't teach that. We don't give our youth something they can have for a lifetime, something they can continue to play in the game. Your job as coaches to, is to make sure that the kids have a love affair with the ball, that wherever they decide, whether it's to quit soccer and play into uh, just pick up games or uh, just some uh, – amateur league or whatever when they're adults you need to provide them the skills that they can enjoy this, the game for a lifetime it can be enjoyed for a lifetime if you teach them the technical aspect of the game which is the individual creativity of never never being scared to have the ball you it has to be that that should be our number one priority but we can't because you got to win you got to learn how to play system you got to play tactics and all that stuff it's garbage it's killing us so the two things i i say you have to do is to create a love for the game and number two is creativity over scoreboard to name just a few and there's a lot more onto that in street soccer players learn to handle the ball through instinct street ballers tend to develop the ability to throw fakes and cuts because they are forced to deal with pressure in tight areas because street soccer is not a, a traditional game it's not a traditional uh, size of the field it's in the neighborhood with your friends a fast-paced game that forces players to think on their feet and react instantaneously they learn through experience that what wins games what beats opponents what looks good in front of crowds and creates the moves and and ideas that ultimately keep the sport moving forward. I know what you're saying right now, uh, you deniers of change. Those who are, are the problems that w uh, are, are really causing the problems will not look into the mirror. They have to learn tactics. They'll say that. They'll say, uh, we have to play top competition in Maryland. Stop it. No. Stop it. You need to change your approach. What we're doing is not wor working. It's obviously a problem. We need something more drastic. 
we need something like changing the point system, in my opinion, is the only way to make change because you're not going to get everyone to agree. It's not, it's not going to be possible. Everyone's going to have their different opinion. Change the flipping rules of the game. And how you change the rules, it change the point system. Give a point. Just as simple as, as this is, change the rules for youth soccer. Start with the age group. Do something that's drastic. You've tried it before, but you do stupid things like everyone has to be at half field before they have a goal kick so they can connect a pass or two um, before they get wrecked. That's silly. Make it very, very uh, forward thinking like every pass you make in your defensive half, you get a point. Every pass you make in the attacking half, you get two. Every goal you score is worth, say, five, whatever. Make it more about Receiving the ball, looking up, and having to make decisions. Have flip charts. You have to do it. That's the, the way the game should be going. Be drastic about it. That's the only way it's possible. Comment. Let me know if I'm crazy. What, what do you suggest? It's not about creating another league. It's not about creating more divides. It's not about, uh, oh, we need better administrators and all that. And I get ASA has dropped the ball repeatedly, but they just add new administration. That poor John Roseanne comes in, and everything's folding. Kind of like the Vanat Vanat Soccer Club. That folded. Just kidding. Um, He chose to step out as soon as his kids were done. But it it is a problem. Uh, We have a problem. We have to get along in in a different capacity. We need major changes and do something different. Because we're not. It's just more the same. And the ones that are dictating things are the ones that have been dictating things for decades. It's the same people involved, guys. It's the same people. And they're being, and when they're about to get out, they're re- grooming others to keep repeating the problems. It's a big problem. So those are my thoughts on what's going on. It's good to be back. Now let's, it's time for the best of all ball. Here's this week's best adult soccer league moments. That concludes all ball. Uh, that last play had like six, like two f- feet up tackles and no calls. It's not easy being a referee. Now, that's all I have unless you have anything for us, Jack, or you viewers that won't comment on my live show. On a show that reaches Maryland and people talking trash about me. You can find us on iHeartRadio, Google Play, iTunes, or wherever else podcasts are found, or go to CoachCamera.com for direct access to our content. Other than that, we'll see you next Sunday, 8 p.m. Mount Standard Time. Peace.